guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christy and today I have my daughter Brittany behind the camera, which is going to help out tremendously. Um, you guys have asked for a video that kind of shows what it's like to set up and break down when I get to a campsite. So if you'll stick around, I'll show you what that looks like. So one of the very first things that you want to check when you get to a campsite before you plug anything up before you unhook from your camper is to make sure that you are parked in a way that both your power hose, your water hose, and your sewer hoses all reach where they're supposed to go. I have done it a couple of times where I pulled in and went ahead and unhooked the camper and then went to um, attach the sewer hose and I was about that much too short. So I had to go unhook everything pull back around, move the camper over about this far so that I can hook up my sewer hose. So that is something you always want to so Basically, you just want to stretch them out to the pedestal to make sure that they're going to reach where they need to go. My sewer is here and my water is there. So I am good, but sometimes in different campgrounds, you may be parked further back or you may be parked further over. So just check that the Next first. thing that you want to do before you unhook your camper is to make sure that the breakers are turned off for it's 30 amp or 50 amp, whatever you have. Make sure that that's turned off. Then you'll wanna go ahead and plug in your surge protector because you wanna test the power pole. Also, I've had a situation where I got all hooked up. I checked to make sure that I had the link, but then I went to turn the power on and the power didn't work. So I'm going to plug this in. I'm gonna test my surge protector first. Turn this now on. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in and then I'm gonna work on disconnecting the camera. So when I'm getting ready to disconnect the camper, I want to check for level. This is my side to side level. This is a very level campground. If it were not, if the space were not, then I would go ahead and use my Anderson leveler to get that. But I'm okay. As long as the bubble is within the black marks, I'm pretty good to Hold go. into your site. You know that everything reaches where it's supposed to and that you are level side to side. You want to go ahead and before you do anything else, chalk your tires so you're not rolling back and forth. Some people say you just need to do one side. I do both. Maybe it's redundant, but I always do uh, just to make sure. So you just slide that under there and I'll put links to these um, in the description as well for you guys. But I love these. I've had them for about three years and they've held up well. So basically I'm just going to repeat that on the other side and then we'll move on to the next Since step. I've already hooked up the power to the camper, I'll be able to use my jack. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the power from my car. Some people do that in the reverse order. They just leave the car hooked up and they attach the power last. I don't, I like to get everything done and get my car out of the way. So I'm just going to, I already undid the zip tie thing here. So I'm gonna move that out of the way and I'm going to just go ahead and unplug that directly from the car. Wrap that back around and get it out of my way. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and unhook my trailer brake here, this piece here. Let's go unhook that and get that out of the way. I don't disconnect my chains until I'm all the way set up because sometimes when you lower the jack and it pops off the coupler here, um, it can cause the trailer to move just a little bit. So I always keep these on as a preventative or a, uh, in case of hazard. I've heard stories of that happening to someone where the jack has jumped off of the plates and onto the ground. So I'm just trying to prevent that from happening. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take my master lock off here. Just pop that out, set that up here. The next thing I wanna do is go ahead and remove my Anderson sway hitch. And you can tell that these are very, very tight. There's no way that I can hand loosen them. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower this until there's some slack on the chains and I should be able to just loosen them with my hands. And you can see now that there's some slack in the chains. You don't have to do that if you want to just use the wrench for all of it, but I think it's so much easier if you get it to a point where you can just loosen it with your hands. Just gonna repeat that on the other side. Once I've got those disconnected, I can go ahead and pull the pin out of here. 
Sometimes you have to push it through sometimes. Now there, and this piece you can just push down on and pull that out. I always put my pieces back together as I go. Some people are not, they just set it all to the side and when they finish, they put it up. I like to keep it organized a little better than that. So I just put it all up as I go. So now that I've removed the Anderson sway hitch, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the vehicle. Again, I'm not taking the chains off until I've got this part done. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and raise the camper up until the ball pops off. And as you can tell, it does shift a little bit. That's why the chalks are very important. Um, I'll go ahead and raise it all the way up until it clears from the vehicle. I'll unhook the chains and then I'll pull the car forward so that I have more room to work. Of the two levels that I have on my casita, this one is the most important. It levels front to back. And I'm told that because of the refrigerant or coolant, whatever it is in the refrigerator, that it needs to stay level on a consistent basis. Otherwise you'll develop crystals and you'll have issues with your refrigerator. So side to side, that's more your comfort, whether you wanna sleep with your head down or up, but front to back is going to be the very most important. I'm gonna go ahead and lower my jack here to get that thing level for me. to go ahead and lock it up here. This is my proven lock here. As you can see, the lock here is on the bottom. So you'll just take that out, pull this piece out like this. We've got two separate pieces here. This is the part that if you wrap your chains around, put them in here like this. This. The reason that I go ahead and lock my chains up in here, if you don't, someone can still use your hooks, hook it onto their vehicle and pull off with it. Is it necessary? Maybe not, and nobody probably will ever try to steal it, but just in case, it's a second deterrent for them. So once you get your chains on there, put that up in there. You lock that down. Go ahead and slot piece in here. And come this way. And this piece right here will slide onto that. And lock. The next thing I'll do is put my master log back on here. Go ahead and just cover up my jack. Uh, just to keep it protected from the elements a little bit, from the sunshine, from the rain. My cover is pretty worn, but I can still use it. And then I'll just tuck my plug back into here. And they make these little pieces that you can attach and put your plug in, but for now, that's what I do, just kind of to keep the plug up. I'm gonna put my back stabilizer jacks down. Guys, I never use these to level, and I never put this down until everything is completely level. I'm not going to adjust the camper at all anymore. This basically just keeps the back end from moving around as you're coming in and out of the camper. So once I get it to this point and the feet are down here onto the mat, I'll go ahead and turn it around one more time just to make it stable. But I never use this to jack up my camper. You can, if you do that, you can't actually mess up your, um, your scissor jacks. You can fold them, they bend, they break. I've seen it happen, it happened to my daughter on hers. I'll go ahead and get my water hose hooked up. A lot of places will have um, the faucets where you actually just turn the knob up here. This one has one down here at the bottom and you'll turn the lever. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it hooked up here. I'm not gonna turn that on yet because I'm gonna hook it up at the camper, but I have something fun to show you. So one of the things that I have always struggled with is the connection to the camper. Um, I always get it cross-threaded or messed up and I have the hardest time. And then a friend of mine installed this Quick Connect for me. So now instead of messing with all of that, I'll put a link for this um, down below. But this just screws in my water hose, a piece that screws into here. And when I wanna connect my water, I pull this piece back like that and just set it right there and let go and my water is connected. I love that. One thing that I need to say first, before I turn this water on here, I had Brittany go ahead and turn the faucet on inside just to relieve some of the pressure. If you forget to do that, the worst that it's gonna do, I'm gonna turn that on 
and this is gonna pop off because there's so much pressure if you don't turn the sink on inside. But now that that's done, I'll come over here, I'll turn the valve on, and voila, I have water to the camper. Quick note that I forgot to show y'all, I do already have a water pressure regulator hooked up to my water hose, so make sure that you do that as well. I just forgot to show you in the video. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to hooking the sewer up. This place has the cap that you can just spin off. I'll spin that off to set it to the side. I'll take my sewer hose here. I have a rhino hose, which I can link in the description for you as well. And this piece just basically spins in there. You want to make sure that you're connected good because if you're not and you go to dump, this whole piece can pop off and you will spray your contents everywhere else, which you don't want to do. And then you come over here to the other side, take off the sewer cap there. And as you can see, these are threaded to spin around that. Stretch out their hose a little bit. And you lock it on and your sewer's ready to go. So once I get the sewer hose hooked up, I don't open the valves to the tank. This is the black tank and the gray tank. I don't leave those open. Some people do, especially the gray tank, so that when they shower, all the water runs out. I don't do that because I want the water building up and the black tank is gonna be your toilet. So once I dump the black tank, I wanna have a lot of water in my gray tank to come back through and wash all of that out of the hose. Also, if you don't have enough um, water in your black tank, you can get what's called a poo pyramid and you can have a mess with your tank. So I always want to keep a lot of water in there and then also have a lot of water in the gray tank to just wash it. I just open my door back up and you can see my stool is still in place here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the step stool here, put my handy little stool down here, and we'll take you inside and let you see what's shifted around. So as you can see, my shelf is still in place here. Everything else, nothing's really shifted around. So when I get ready to get set back up, I just put my pillows where they go, take the stuff off the bed, and I am ready to get set. Again, on my refrigerator, I keep it on auto. So as soon as I plug back in, it went back to um, electric. So it's on shore power now. If you turn yours off, I wanna make sure to go ahead and turn that back on now. So as you can see, it doesn't take me very long to get the inside set up. I don't have a lot of knick-knacky things. Um, I'm a minimalist anyways, and I do that on purpose because I am picking up and moving to different parks constantly. I don't want to have to be putting so many things away that it just takes too long. Once I get the outside done, I can come in. It takes me about five minutes to get everything else set up, and then I'm ready to go enjoy my camping space. All right guys, so what we're gonna start on is what I do when I get ready to travel on travel day. One of the very first things that I do and one of the most important things I do is make sure that all the buttons are pushed in and that your cabinets and your doors are completely secured. If you don't do this, you will find yourself when you arrive at your destination, the door open and all the contents all over the floor. And that actually happened to me once. I had an apple cider vinegar bottle that hit the ground. It did not break. I was lucky, but man, that would have been such a mess had that happened. Now, the next thing that you want to do is just put away some of the things that if you're going down the road, this will fly. I just take a few of these away, close them up, and then you're good traveling down the road. And make sure to lock that cabinet. Also, when I have things sitting on the countertop, I'll just put them in the sink for purposes of keeping them from flying around as well. I have this little dehumidifier here that I use and I'll set that in the sink as well. And also just things like this. This is my other dehumidifier that I talk about all the time. And I'll link some of these things in the description below if you're interested. I'll just take some of these things and just toss them on the bed. And also just little things like this. This would probably ride fine, but I go ahead and take it down. I just set it on the bed and when I travel, I put the pillow over it and everything seems to stay pretty good in place. Now, if you'll notice, my TV is not up here. It is actually sitting on my table. When I arrived at my last destination, my TV was on the bed. It had fallen down and the bracket is messed up and I cannot reattach the TV. So for right now, I'm just going to put the TV on the bed also and put the pillow down and just cover it up to keep it safe. Things do not typically slide too much on the bed when they have something over them. I have a blanket that I keep here and a lot of times I'll just toss that over so that nothing else slides. I also have the little sign here and here. 
I'm gonna take those down, just put them in the cabinet above to secure them. I have forgotten to do that and they've still been in place when I got there, but they do swing and I don't wanna mess it up the blinds. So again, you just want to make sure that every single drawer and cabinet in here is locked. Don't forget the lower ones because I tend to do that sometimes. I take my towel off, I store it underneath so that I can lock this. And then of course the microwave cabinet, your closet, bathroom, just make sure all of those are done. And I don't have to put these red pillows on the bed. I like to, just in case it's an extra bumpy ride and I end up having them on the floor. I don't like that. So I'll just toss them on the bed. They ride fine. Same thing here. The paper towel holder rides fine and everything else is good for the road. In the bathroom, the only thing that I do is make sure I close the toilet lid and the stuff that I have sitting on the counter and the toothbrushes and soap and stuff, I just put that in the sink as well. And the last thing that I do as far as packing up the inside is I just grab my little step stool, I put it inside, make sure that you put your step up, close the door, and I'm not gonna lock it just yet because there's inevitably something that I'll need to get out of the inside when I'm finishing up. So now we're gonna work on packing up the outside. I'm disconnect, I'm ready to get the water disconnected. I go ahead and open the valve in on the sink inside again to release some of the pressure off here, or turn the water off there. I'll disconnect this end. And again, with the wonderful quick connect, all you have to do is pull that down and you are disconnected. Beautiful. I love that. So let me get my water hose out of the way here. If I don't spray my camera lady. <laughs> yeah, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> and then for sewer, you're gonna wanna dump your tanks before you leave. So I push that elbow down there. All right, I'm ready now to dump the sewer. Um, you want once you once you angle this down, you want to make sure that it's going in a gravity feed position. Some campgrounds make you have the support rails that go under here, which I'll show you in another video. In fact, I'll link that video for you. I don't have to in this campground, and already gravity is kind of feeding that way, so I don't have to worry about that here. So you always, always want to dump your black tank first. Black tank is going to be your sewer, your toilet. You want to get that out of there first, so then you'll use your gray water to wash it out. So in my case, I'm just going to pull the lever here. And on the casita, the black tank empties really quickly, but I have a 32 gallon gray tank that takes a lot longer to empty. So once, once the gray or the black tank is done, I'll make sure, see there is a little bit of gravity issue here. So once the, the black tank is done, I'll close that valve back off and then I'm going to pull the gray tank. And the gray tank empties a lot slower, so it's going to take a little bit longer for this to happen. And so I do have the elbow on my sewer hose so you can see when it's still draining. Um, obviously that's my gray tank. I wouldn't show you the other. Uh, that's my gray tank. So I'll just wait until there's no more water running there. I'll close the valve and unhook it. So as you can see, all the water has now run through. Sometimes if there is any slope, you'll kind of have to walk it through. Can you see that there? You kind of have to walk it through just to make sure you get the rest that's out of your hose. And when you're done with that, you're gonna close that tank back off, unscrew your sewer and put it away. Now, some people will take a water hose and they'll go ahead and rinse out the hose and all that after they've done all that. I don't do that because again, I leave enough water in my gray tank that it flushes everything through the hose and really my hose is pretty clean you don't have to wear gloves i just don't like getting that stuff all over my hands uh, basically i never leave this on for a couple reasons one is if you've ever knocked your shin on one of these things you can appreciate me taking it off but also i don't want somebody to come by and be able to just steal this and then you just slide the pin through put your clip in and then you're good to go. Take this off. So I'm going to go ahead and take my locks off here. I do have just a regular master lock that you use for the coupler. Pin just pulls out of that. And this is my proven lock and I love this thing. 
Um, it's virtually impenetrable. None of them are. I have a video on this lock if you're interested and I'll put the link below as well. You can lock your chains up in here, which I do like a lot. So one of the very first things I do when I'm getting ready to hook up is I make sure that I take up the back scissor jacks. If you don't do that, whenever you try to raise up the trailer to pull your vehicle underneath it and you start raising the trailer, you can actually bend and damage the jacks on the bottom. So that's always step number one. And for me, you can do this with a drill. I don't. This little pad that I use right here, I just picked that up at the dollar store just because I'm tired of putting my knee on the ground. And so then for me, I just, crank this bad boy back up. So this is the part that I was talking about. You always wanna make sure your scissor jacks are put up first before you try to raise this, otherwise you squish them in the back. So I'm gonna raise this up enough to where I can back my car up and get the ball up underneath here. Currently, I need to raise it just a little bit. So now that I've got it lined up, I'm just going to drop it down onto the ball. Once you get it where you want to, you're gonna go ahead and lock that down. I always just go ahead and put my master lock on at this point. I just don't want anything to come loose and have this let go. When I bought the Casita, I did opt for the Anderson weight distribution hitch. I love this thing and I have never felt the camper moving back and forth going down the road, even in decent winds uh, with 18 wheelers whizzing by. So I love this thing. I never leave without it. And I'm gonna show you how I put this on. Pull the pin out of it here. Got that locked in there. This part of the chain is just gonna fit into here. So it just slides through here like this. Okay. So when I purchased this, Casita set it up for me on the uh, weight distribution hitch. When I tighten this, I'm going to tighten it to seven rings uh, based on what they set it up for my particular vehicle. You'll have to, you may be different on yours, but this is what I'll have to set it at. I'll show you that in just a minute when I tighten it fully. So when I purchased it from Casita, they told me what the number I need to have this on. These are the rings. For my particular vehicle, it's seven rings that I need to tighten it to. I always tighten by hand first, and you can see one, three, four, five. I still have to go a little bit. So what you do in that situation, I do have the socket and the wrench. So I'll raise the jack up just a little bit here. And as you can see, it kind of lets some uh, slack on the chains here and you can push it through and tighten it by hand. Three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven rings, that's what mine's set up for. If you can't hand tighten it, I do have the wrench again, you can tighten it that way. So I know it does sound like a lot already, but I had to write everything down and just follow my steps about the first 10 times. Now it just comes natural to me. And believe me, I had no experience with any of this stuff before. Promise it, it will end up becoming old hat to you. So like I was saying, I hand tightened this one as much as I could, and I could raise the jack up if I wanted to, or I just have my wrench. I can go ahead and tighten it up until I have my seven rings. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So once you get your chains from your Anderson hitch hooked up, then you go ahead and lower the camper down. You can see this foot here. I bring it all the way up to here. You just don't want to drag it if you happen to hit something or have a dip. Once I get that up, I will take my actual chains and you always want to crisscross these so it makes a little bit of a cradle. I'm just going to hook that down here. 
take my chain from the other side. You wanna crisscross them to make sure that you have a little bit of a cradle. It's a little bit more stability should something happen, should this fail and your camper starts flying backwards, you do have some stability to try to keep it at least attached to your vehicle. So this piece is, is this is my emergency trailer brake. I wanna go ahead and attach that now. And what this piece does is if something happens and your hitch fails, all of that, if your camper starts going backwards, it will pull this and it will Im immediately uh, engage the brakes on your camper itself to stop it and keep it from rolling backwards and away from you. So you're just gonna take the clip, attach it right onto that and you are good to go. So I forgot to record this part for you, but go ahead and turn the breaker off at the power pedestal, unplug the camper and stow your cord back in the casita. Now that we've disconnected the power from the camper, we're gonna go ahead and hook up to my vehicle here. I have the seven pin, I'm just gonna plug it in here. Now, one thing that you wanna always make sure when you're plugging this in, this cap should clip down on there. If it doesn't, it means your cord is not in there enough. So you wanna make sure you get it in until this clips down. I have this little piece here that I put over it and then you twist it up that basically keeps that down. There have been situations where people have not locked that down. The cord came disconnected as they were driving and drug on the road and damaged their power. Once you've got everything hooked up, I always save the chocks to the last because if for some reason you don't get hooked up exactly right or your trailer shifts a little bit, you want your chalk blocks to be in place so that the camper doesn't roll backwards on you. So everything else is done. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out and we're gonna be ready to go. And an important step that you do, that I do before I'm traveling and I get on the road, I always check my tire pressure on my camper. Um, I want one of those little TPMS systems, which is tire pressure management systems that you can put on the tires. You can either have the colored kind where you can just look at it or the kind that monitors through your phone. Don't have that yet, but it is in the works. So for now, I just check, check my tire pressure the old fashioned way. And guys, it's gonna be different for everyone depending on what tires you have on here. It does tell you on the tire what the recommended air pressure is. So I always, always, always check before I get on the road what the pressure is in my tires. Okay, we're good to go. So I'll do both sides and then I am ready to hit the road. All right, so now that everything is hooked up, the final thing that I do is I always test my lights to make sure that I'm getting power to the camper. I have Brittany here with me today. So normally I don't have someone and I have to turn the headlights on, turn the flashers on, turn the signal on and walk back here and check it every time. But I do have help today, which makes that a lot easier. Sometimes when I'm leaving a campground or if I'm at the dump station, I'll ask somebody there just to verify that for me. But I do always check that to make sure. So the very, very last thing that I do when I've got everything else done, I always walk around the camper and check everything. Make sure I haven't left any cords. One time I left my surge protector. So I always make sure, walk around, make sure I've got all that. Make sure my tires look good, that everything's battened down. If you have the vent hood uh, clip here, make sure that that's closed. I lock my door. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Then also just one more check all the way around the vehicle. Make sure that I've got the, the uh, chains hooked up, the power hooked up, that my emergency brakes are all connected. And then once I've done that all the way around, then I can do it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. If you have extra comments, things that I forgot, things that make your life a little bit easier, ways to do it more efficiently, go ahead and put that in the comments for me. Otherwise, remember to always enjoy those little things and we'll see you next time.